In this video, I'll explain how Newton's method, also called the newton raphson method, works. In most cases, only the one-dimensional case is discussed, but we'll talk about how that extends to multiple dimensions and how to visualize what's going on. Multidimensional Newton's method is a general algorithm for solving any system of equations. It's a popular method for solving engineering and scientific simulations. Here are a few examples that use it. This is a fluid dynamic simulation over a wing. This one uses Newton's method to simulate sea ice behavior. Some astrophysics simulations also use Newton's method. Lastly, OpenMDAO is a popular Python package that enables users to converge their models with Newton's method. Our goal here is to be able to solve for function inputs, u, that make a set of residual equations, r, all zero. This may sound like a very specific problem, but actually any equation or set of equations you're trying to solve can be put into this form. For example, in fluid dynamic simulations, we break up the space into a bunch of small cells. Suppose here we want to drive the fluid flow to steady state. In other words, find the pressure, density, and other states such that the amount of stuff going into each cell is the same as the amount going out of it. We can express this in the ru equals zero form by saying we want the stuff going in minus the stuff going out to be zero. Then Newton's method can be applied to the system to efficiently solve it. Let's start with a one-dimensional example. Remember, the goal is to find the value of u that makes the residual zero. Here, that's the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. The plot on the right will track the residual value at each solver iteration to show convergence. There's no way to solve an arbitrary equation on the first try, so we need to use the current information to make guesses until we find a solution. It is important to try to reduce the number of guesses it takes to find the solution because we want fast and efficient solvers. One method might be to guess u values until we find one with a residual value that has the opposite sign as the initial guess. We can then use the left and right points as the lower and upper bounds because we know the residual must cross the x-axis somewhere in between them. Then we guess the point halfway between the bounds. If the residual at that state is positive, it becomes the new upper bound. If it's negative, it becomes the lower bound. While this works, it takes a long time to converge really tightly on the solution. What if we use the slope, also known as the derivative or the gradient, to inform the next guess? Using the slope, we can draw a line tangent to the current guess that linearly approximates the residual function. Then we update our guess to the state that makes the linear approximation have a residual of zero. This method, called Newton's method, converges much more quickly than the first approach, especially when it gets close to the solution. Now we have an efficient method to find solutions to 1D problems. But in general, these types of problems can have many more residual equations. So how can we extend this to multiple dimensions? Before, we had a single residual equation that depended on a single state. The goal was to find the value of the state, u, that made the residual zero. Now with the 2D case, we have two residual equations that each depend on two states. We want to find the combination of u1 and u2 values that make both residuals zero. So how do we visualize this? The two states are represented as u1 and u2 on the two horizontal axes. Each of the two residuals depends on both the u1 and u2 values, so we represent the residual on the vertical axis. This is like the 1D plot, except now we've added a second horizontal axis to represent the second state. We want to find the values of the two states that make both residuals zero. In other words, we want to find the u1 and u2 values where both residuals intersect this plane. In our made-up example problem, the first residual looks like this, and is equal to zero along this blue line. The second residual looks like this, and is equal to zero along this red line. The solution to our problem is where the two lines intersect, because that's the point where both residuals are zero. The solver isn't aware of these lines or the solution to the problem, like we are. 
It only knows the residual values and their slopes at the current guess. Suppose our initial guess is here, represented by the blue point. Let's start by looking at the first residual. At the current guess, we compute the first residual's value and its slope. Using that information, we build a tangent plane and find where that tangent plane equals zero, where it intersects the u1, u2 plane. In the 1D case we looked at before, this would give us the updated guess and we'd repeat. But here, the linear approximation is zero along a line, not a point. So how do we know where along that line to choose? Well, there's a second residual that we haven't used yet. We repeat the same process with the second residual that we did with the first. A linear approximation of the second residual is built around the current guess. That linear approximation has a residual value of zero along this line. Now we have two lines that each represent the u1 and u2 values where the two linear approximations equal zero. You might see what's coming. Our next guess is the point where the two lines intersect because that's the unique point where the two linear approximations are both zero. That same process is repeated at the new guess for the u1 and u2 values. We build a tangent plane for the first residual and find the line where its residual value is zero. Same thing for the second residual. And then, like the first time, we update our guess to the u1 and u2 values where the two lines intersect. I'll speed it up now, showing just the lines where the two tangent planes equal zero and their intersection. Like the 1D case, it converges very rapidly once it approaches the solution. Solving a two-dimensional problem is the highest dimension that can be easily visualized like this, but the math extends to an arbitrary number of dimensions. In practice, Newton solvers are used to solve systems that may have thousands, even millions, of residuals. Newton's method is the core algorithm behind much of our work in the MDO lab. Variations of it are used both for our solvers and our optimizers. To learn more about the underlying theory and math, take a look at Engineering Design Optimization by Martins and Ning, which can be downloaded for free online. Also check out our website, where our publications are freely accessible.